So the first part of this video is going to be um, fitting this bottom piece into place. I want it to be flush with that back side and this was one of those weird jobs that ended up taking a lot longer than I thought it would just because there's so many angles involved. So I basically started by putting my square against those two vertical pieces because they're not a perfect 90 off the back side and getting a mark to saw up to. So I'm just gonna saw off some rough chunks and then fit it into place from there. It was a lot of putting it in place, taking it off, trimming a little bit and, and, and doing that repeatedly to get it to fit really nice because it's one of those other processes that if you take too much off, you, there's no going back. So after the first cut, you could see it kind of fits into place, but then I would trim a little bit more off as I went along. And then this is adding the angles to the one side because the one vertical comes off the base at an angle. So this also has to have an angle as well. And I would cheat the saw to the inside so that the top, the bottom wasn't um, as thick as the top. So that is basically what I was left with. And then I ended up trimming off a little bit more on the inside so that as this plank um, expands and contracts with seasonal humidity, it doesn't push those verticals out. So this is kind of the rough fit. And what you won't see is I do trim off a little bit on those inside edges. You can see that gap there. I make that gap more prominent just so that this could float. And you won't notice that there's a gap there once it's all in place. So once I had that fit nice, I went through and trimmed up this final piece because now this is ready almost to go. So I just kind of shaped it a little bit nicer as well as I shaped the back so it's not such a stark uh, transition between the back side and the panel. It flows into the base a little bit nicer. Once I was done with that, I could taper my edges on the bottom panel. I'm having the taper visible on top, but on the top panel, I, I personally um, prefer that the taper is on the underside so you have a nice flat surface on top. Then once that was done, I started sanding this and I'm gonna sand this to about 120, 150. And, and I started final sanding it now because this is almost ready for finish. So then the next part of this is I'm making a jig and this jig is going to allow me to make slots into my panels. You can see I'm testing the spacing with the router bit. I didn't end up using that router bit, but it worked out regardless. So I have a spacer that's about five eighths of an inch and I'm just using that spacer to attach these slots. So this is going to give me a look that I see um, people call on the internet a zipper table. I would call it a zipper table as well. The first time I made one of these was probably about five years ago and my brother saw it and he really liked it. It was a, it was a coffee table. So I decided to incorporate that design into the table top because I knew it was a surefire bet that he liked it because he had already told me and his fiance did as well that they liked it. So I made this gigantic jig and I've made multiple jigs like this over the years to do similar things. I've thrown them out because they haven't functioned as well as I'd like. This one functioned quite well so I'm going to try and keep it but building jigs like this I always find that um, as soon as they're finished there's you think of ways to improve it or ways you could have done it differently. So this one works but there are ways I would have done it differently. And um, I went through and added screws, which I'll probably eventually take out, but I wanted to use this right away. And it's winter time, so the glue is going to dry very slowly on this. So in order to be able to use it right away, I just put some screws in it and then I could go, go to town on, the, on that cherry. So this is it set up into place. I have it clamped to the cherry slab. This is the bit I ended up using. It's a, it's a bushing with a quarter inch um, straight cutting bit and the bushing is a 5 8 bushing so it fits in the in the spacing I have and I needed to use that bit because I have two layers of 3 quarter inch plywood on top of each other so I have to go down at least an inch and a half before I even hit the cherry which means I needed a router bit with a very long shank and the only one I had that would work for this was that quarter inch bit which means I needed a bushing but you could see I have this clamp to the cherry and I'm just slowly removing that material 
And then I have two stops as well clamped to the cherry so that I can only go as far as I want on either side. I don't have to worry about routing into my jig. So I would just cut one side, flip it, cut the other, and then slowly lower the bit. I would say for each one, I lowered the bit like three times. It wasn't terrible. This isn't structural, so I didn't go very deep. You could see I, I probably barely went a half an inch deep. Once I had that done, I could put the jig on top of the second plank, set it up the exact same way. This one I put at a little more of an angle and I could do the exact same thing. Once I had all of my routing done, I went through and squared up the back side because I'm going to chisel them out to make these squares. Um, you can keep them rounded. I've done that before. You just have to round over the planks you're putting in, in place. I have found it's easier as a process to just square off the back side of these and then you can cut your, your planks square. So then for the planks on the cherry, I'm using walnut and I'm just ripping it down to the width of my opening, which is about, oh, like I said before, about five eighths of an inch. Now all of these are a little bit different um, width wise. So I cut each individually. You could see I would fit it into place. I didn't hammer all the way down because I would have to pop them out to put glue in. And then I just went through and fit all of these into place. And um, so I'm not going to show fitting the planks for the top side because it's the exact same process. But the top side of this did need a uh, bow tie or a butterfly. And that is because there's a crack in it. So these, I do this mostly by hand. I'd already cut the bow tie, I didn't film that. But I just go around the perimeter, staying shy of my line, so at the end I could clean it up and get it right to the edge of that line. And I remove about a sixteenth of an inch of wood at a time, and then I would just go through and uh, go through the perimeter again and keep removing wood till I have the right thickness. There's that walnut bow tie in place, and people love bow ties. Um, I've yet to meet a customer when you've put a bow tie in their furniture that hates them. They love them and they're, they're pretty easy to do. It's a fast process. So then I can go through and um, attach all these slats. And with this one, I kind of took them all out without numbering them. And like I said, they're all a little bit of a different size. So it was a little bit of a pain figuring out which one went where. But once I had them all into place, they looked good. There was no huge gaps or anything. If you have a gap um, in pieces like that, the eye picks it up so quickly. So having those joints fit nicely is super important. The next day I could come through with a hand plane and just clean up all of those pieces because I left everything a little proud and then I could final sand both of these. These were going to be ready for finish. Now the finish on these I used water locks and that is because water locks is um, rated as a waterproof finish so on highly used um, tabletop surfaces or utilitarian surfaces I like to use that. Um, I'm not going to show the finishing process of the, the, the top slabs, uh, uh, especially the top slabs, because I was kind of running out of time on this project. The slabs had to be to the wedding venue a couple days before the actual wedding. So I was, I was kind of rushing to get this done. But this is a pre-stain that I'm putting on here. I like to put pre-stain on all of my pieces, even if it's not fine grain lumber, just because it evens out the grain and um, it just gives you a nicer final finish and basically the pre-stain on there is what it's going to look like with finish on there. So then these actually do have the finish on them, they're done and I just put them back into place so that I could cut the top. So I'm trimming these arms so they don't stick out. I'm also putting little 45s on the bottom so that um, it creates a nice sense of lift off the floor. It won't look as flat when you have that angled piece right at the bottom. So with that cut, I could kind of test the cherry back in place. And then these cherry slabs were going to be going, I believe, the next day. So I was pretty much done with those. So then this is the walnut backer. And my goal for this was to keep that beautiful walnut figure on the one piece. 
So this was naturally split in half, like I said in the first video. And all I did to start this process was I cleaned up that, that rough cut side there from the split so that I could safely cut it down to size on my radial alarm saw. This was kind of nice because I was left with some nice chunks that I could use for other projects. So now that I had this in place, I could trim it down a little bit. I trimmed it basically up into the figure because I would have to, it was too wide for the back. I wanted the back to be only as wide as the cherry top. And then this is basically what they're going to look like put together, but I still needed to take off some thickness. So I usually really like the look of sapwood in projects. Um, walnut sapwood, when you finish it, it almost shiver, uh, shimmers. It's, it's quite pretty, but I didn't want there to be a contrast at all in the walnut. So I started by completely removing the sapwood and then I could go through and trim them a little bit more so I could get them at the right um, width. So I didn't end up taking off as much as that pencil line shows, but that was kind of basically what I was doing. I was going through, making some marks, removing some material. You could see that's this is the finished piece and I pretty much kept that entire piece of figure. And I'm just screwing these together because I'm gonna be doing the, um, the, the zippered slats on this as well. And it just needs to be uh, very sturdy and in place in order to do that. So I put some poplar slabs on the back of it so I didn't have to worry about it moving around on me and then I could clamp this to my piece and since this isn't as wide as the cherry I could get away with flipping the jig upside down and using it that way which was actually easier to do so the slats I lined up the slat with the bottom of the piece and the top of the piece which means all of my slats would be uh, parallel so then this is just a better look at how I, I set up my stops. So I put it in place with depth I wanted to go. I made sure it was the same distance on both sides and then just clamped a scrap piece of wood in place. And then I would do the same thing on the other side. So I have it roughly in place of how deep I wanted it to go. And then this one was really easy. It was three quarters of an inch. So I could just put a three quarter inch slat there and clamp that into place. And then this is the exact same process. Um, this one, since there's so many cuts to make, I ended up just doing one whole side at the time at one time instead of flipping it back and forth like I did on the cherry. You could see that first row. Everything came out nicely. I didn't have any tear out or anything like that, which was nice. Tear out could quickly ruin ruin the look you're going for. And then I could flip it and do the other side as well. So then once I had the last one routed, I just double, tripled, multiple check to make sure everything was good. Because if you had to take this jig off and put it back on, it would be really hard to get it lined up perfectly. And then I can remove all of my clamps and then I'm left with my piece. So then for this, I'm using the contrasting cherry for my slats. So it's walnut and cherry and cherry and walnut. So I have cherry in my shop. I'm ripping it down, same process. Um, to the all of the slats are the exact same depth, which is uh, width, which is about five eighths of an inch, and then I can measure for the depth and and cut those. And these two, the same 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 thing. You're going to have little undulations in your stops and in the jig. So I I cut each one of these slats individually because they weren't all exactly the same. But you can see I'm just checking for the depth and then I'm taking that cherry and ripping it down so that I can then cut it down on my radial arm saw and put them into place. Before I did that, once again, I had to go through and square up um, all these pieces. And you could always tell kind of what time of day it is in my shop when the sunlight starts to come into those western facing windows. It always is, is um, a sure sign that the sun is about to set. And then you could see sometimes I would cut these for one slat and then they would fit into a, another, another. And then um, towards the end, it was pretty easy to, to pop them in. So on this one for the glue up, I was smart and I put all of these in the order I took them out. So it was much easier. I could just pop them all back into place. And once again, this is not a structural piece. It's going to be screwed to the back side of the table. So, um, 
this is going to be more than sturdy enough for what I need it for. Could pop them all in and then once they were in place I threw some clamps on them as it's dried overnight just to pull all those joints together. Now on this one I don't think I show it in the video and it's kind of hard to see in the photos. I left the cherry proud. I just liked the way it looked um, instead of being flush. I ended up just kind of putting a little bit of a chamfer on all the edges and it looked really nice. You could kind of see it in, in the foreground there of, of the cherry not being uh, the cherry on that walnut not being flush. So then I could put this in place and I was kind of going back and forth of whether or not I wanted the walnut to overlap the cherry top or the cherry top to sit on the walnut and I kind of settled on the cherry top sitting on the walnut. It just looked better and then I definitely flipped this around about 20 times to decide how I wanted the figure if I wanted it at the uh, the height of it at the top or the height of it at the bottom before I finished the base. So on the base I put three coats of general finishes and on the back of the walnut I also use general finishes and that is because the waterlox is a great durable finish but I didn't need something so strong on these pieces and they're both good finishes. You won't be able to tell the difference between the two. And general finishes dries much quicker. I could, in the summertime, I could get two or three coats on um, during during one day. In the wintertime, probably about two. Whereas with water locks, you have to wait 24 hours for it to dry. So it is a much bigger time commitment. And you could see the one downside of the zipper table look is there's so many nooks and crannies to cover with finish and sanding. It just takes a long time to do. So then to attach the cherry, I have these figure eight um, swivels. So you could see I just used a fastener bit to, to remove a little bit of material and then chiseled out a little bit more. And then those will swivel with seasonal humidity. And then to attach the backer, I drilled some oversized holes and I could pop a washer in there and then put a screw in there so the screw is um, can float around in those holes. So this is attaching to the swivels. I usually don't use the swivels, but I had them and it worked out for this project. So these are supposed to kind of move with seasonal humidity and you don't have to worry about your top cracking. And then I could put that walnut in place and attach the back. You could tell now that it's post wetting because my fingernails are painted and um, rapidly chipping because I'm back in the shop. And the nice thing about this is you have the two at the top that you could see if you bend down and look, but the underside were covered by the table. So this is the saw I've been using for well over a year since I threw it. You could see there's a nice bend in it and some teeth are missing as well as the fact that one of the little lips that fits in there is missing. So if I saw quite rigorously, it usually pops out. And I mentioned throwing it in my last video and this showed up in my mail. It's a brand new saw and it was a super gen, gen I could speak, it was a super um, generous gift. And um, I'm assuming it was someone on YouTube who sent it because that is where I mentioned it and um, I was grateful to get it and I put it right into use because the back of that walnut wasn't super flush so I could use it to trim up the back side and get everything square and then this is this is that table pretty much finished so I took a ton of photos of this because it wouldn't fit in um, their car so it's kind of living with me for a little bit until I see him again and that means that I could actually take fit pictures of it because usually I don't get great pictures of all my stuff. Plus, once it's in their home, since I'm related to them, I could threaten them and have them send me actual photos um, in the home. But I was happy with the way it turned out and I was happy mostly that they liked it. Um, it also looked good at the wedding. I don't have any photos of that, the slabs at the wedding. But on um, yeah, the main goal was was to make something for them as a, a new forever couple and it, it went across pretty well, so I'm happy with that.